Uh, this is adding and subtracting rationals, day two. Uh, you can find this in your um, textbook in chapter two. So I'm on page six in your packet. Now I'm going to add and subtract mixed numbers, uh, rationals. They're called rationals. They're part of the rational number set. And you can see the first example is already all the way done. I'm going to talk through that one, however. How to do this. This is the first method of how to do this. Change the mixed numbers to improper fractions first. So step one, convert mixed numbers to fractions. Make them improper. Find the common denominator. And then you have to follow the integer rules. Always change subtraction to adding the opposite. So keep, add, up. You have to do that. Okay. So, the first example already done. Negative 4 and 2 thirds plus negative 3 and 1 half. And it's a little clearer on your packet. It's not very clear on the smart board here. I'm sorry. Um, negative 4 and 2 thirds. So, 3 times 4 makes 12 plus 2 gives you that negative 14 that you see there. Negative 14 thirds. And 2 times 3 plus 1 gives you 7 halves. So, I have negative 14 thirds and negative 7 halves. Common denominator is 6, so this fraction, 7 halves, gets multiplied by 3. 7 times 3 is negative 21 6. 3 times 2, and 14 times 2 gives you negative 28 6. So combine the numerators. Same signs, add and keep. So you see you get negative 49 6, which reduces to negative 8 and 1 6. Yes, we are putting them in lowest terms. Example 2. 2 and 4 fifths minus 9 and 1 sixth. Changing them to improper fractions first. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4, 14 fifths. Minus 6 times 9 is 54 plus 1 is 55 sixths. Don't squish your work. Give yourself space. So 55 sixths. So, common denominator would be 30. Oh, this is a subtraction problem, so I'm going to change it to add the opposite. So, that second fraction is negative 55 6. So, 5 times 6 would give me 30. So, 6 times 14 would give me 84. 6 times 5 would give me 30, and 55 times 5, and if you need to do it off to the side, you get 25, carry the 2, 275, so you get 275 30ths, and it's negative. Different signs, subtract, so negative 275 and 84, I'm going to subtract those. And I get 191. So my answer is negative 191 thirtieths. Well, that's improper. I'm going to change that to its lowest terms of negative 6 and 11 thirtieths. Now, your example 3 is just to the right. Um, I put it down below here so I could put it onto the smart board. So on to example 3. Negative 5 and 1 half minus negative 3 and 3 fourths. Make them improper first. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11 halves. Minus, oh, and that's negative 11 halves. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15 fourths. Minus a negative 15 fourths. So common denominator, and I'm going to change it to keep negative 11 halves, add the opposite. So the common denominator of halves and fourths is fourths. So 11 halves as fourths multiplying by 2, and I get 2 times negative 11 is negative 22 fourths plus 15 fourths. That's a positive 15 fourths. Different signs subtract. 
22 take away 15 is 7. Keep the sign of the larger absolute value. And you get negative 7 fourths, which equals negative 1 and 3 fourths. So that's method one, changing the mixed numbers to improper fractions first. I don't really like to do that because sometimes, as you can see, you get really big numerators sometimes, negative 275 thirtieths. I prefer to do method two, which is just keeping them into um, the common denominator and then just following the rules of adding and subtracting, but you have to borrow. So you have to remember borrowing. Some kids don't like method two. I prefer method two myself. Most students would prefer method one. You choose, though. Method two, find the common denominator and follow the integer and subtracting, adding mixed number rules. Put the bigger absolute value number on the top. So uh, find the common denominator, follow the integer rules, always change subtraction to adding the opposite first, so keep add on. Larger absolute value has to go on the top, so you might have to borrow here. Decide the sign and write it where you will place your answer. Add or subtract your mixed numbers, borrowing if necessary. Kids don't like borrowing. Students like don't like to do that, so you may not want to do this method. But for those of you that understand it. So negative 4 and 2 thirds plus negative 3 and 1 half. Common denominator is 6. They have the same sign, so I'm going to add and keep negative 7 and 7 6 as you can see on your paper. Well, 7 6 is improper. That's 1 and 1 6. So add it to the already 7 and you get negative 8 and 1 6. Example number 2. Um, larger absolute value number is the 9. I'm going to change it to keep add up. So 9 and 1 6 and 2 and 4 fifths. And it is negative 9 and 1 6. So common denominator here is 30th. Five times six is 30, so four times six is 24. Keep the whole numbers out in front. Six times five is 30, one times five is five. And yes, that is a negative nine and five thirtieths. Now when I go to subtract, because they're not improper, oh, five, Take away 24. Oh, I can't do that. So I have to borrow from this 9 and make it 8. And yes, it is negative 8. And add 1 to this fraction 5 thirtieths, which is 30 thirtieths. So my new fraction part, adding 1 onto the fraction, 31, coming in as 30 thirtieths. 30 thirtieths plus 5 thirtieths gives me 35 thirtieths. So I can just cross this off. So 35 thirtieths take away 24 thirtieths. That I can do. I get 11 thirtieths. And 8 take away 2 is 6. Take the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the negative 9 and 1 6. So yes, my answer is negative 6 and 11 thirtieths. It's a little bit harder sometimes. Um, negative 5 and 1 half minus negative 3 and 3 fourths. Well, I'm going to keep add the opposite first. So now these are both positive, oh, negative 5 and 1 half. Now they have different signs. They are not both positive. Negative 5 and 1 half plus a positive 3 and 3 fourths. 5 and 1 half has the larger absolute value, the negative 5 and 1 half. So that goes on the top. And to it, I'm going to add a positive 3 and 3 fourths. But really, I'm subtracting these. Different signs subtract. Negative 5 and 1 half and positive 3 and 3 fourths. I'm going to subtract these. Well, can't subtract because I don't, first of all, have a common denominator. So 5 and 2 fourths and 3 and 3 fourths. Now, 2 fourths take away 3 fourths. Not big enough. I have to borrow. And I get adding on four fourths to my two fourths, this one that I borrowed comes over here as four fourths. One is four fourths. So two fourths and four fourths gives me six fourths. I can cross these off. 
six fourths take away three fourths, that I can do. Four take away three, I get one. This has the larger absolute value, the negative five and two fourths. So I take the sign of the larger absolute value number, same sign, down and keep, different sign, subtract. Take the sign of the larger absolute value number. Then you'll be exact. So negative one and three fourths is the answer there. So that's how to do mixed number subtraction with borrowing. Students don't usually like that too much. But if you understand borrowing, you can do that method. If not, you can do method one where you make them improper, but then sometimes you get very large numerators and you have to do some multiplying off to the side or some subtracting off to the side, but you're not borrowing in this method. So sometimes students prefer this method. You have a choice here. You can either make them improper or you can keep whole numbers and fractions separate and borrow. So there's a couple options for subtracting and adding mixed rational numbers. We're going to practice this some more in class tomorrow.